Welcome back to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series. It is brought to you by the Mississippi State University Extension Service as well as the MSU Forest and Wildlife Research Center. I will be your presenter today. My name is Bronson Strickland and I want to acknowledge my colleague and the co-director of the MSU Deer Lab, Steve Damaris. As the name implies, this presentation is all about cool season food plots. I uh, want to review everything more or less that we've learned over the past 10 or 15 years. I uh, want to go over the most common forages, their nutrient profiles, which plants work well, which ones work well in mixes, and which ones deer are attracted to. When we're finished with the presentation, my goal is that you are going to feel completely equipped to know what to plant on your property and why. By no means is this every possible thing you could write about or talk about with cool season food plots, but I think it's a really good collection, certainly for people starting out to get you going. I think the information presented here applies throughout a significant proportion of the range of white-tailed deer, but definitely if you get in extreme northern environments, some of these plants aren't going to work. And then of course, when you get further west in arid and semi-arid environments, the results will not apply as well there either. But for most of you, especially those in the southeastern U.S., I think this information is just for you. Let's start out with what food plots are. I always like to emphasize the word supplement so people understand and keep it in context. You never want to replace managing deer habitat. That's always the foundation, providing good habitat, and that's both food and cover. And we view food plots as truly a supplement to that, adding a little more food to the system. You know, the other benefits that most everyone who's familiar with food plot knows is it's usually going to facilitate wildlife viewing and not just deer, other wildlife as well. And then, of course, from a hunting perspective, food plots certainly will facilitate deer harvest. Can you overhunt a food plot? Can you change deer behavior? You absolutely can. But if, if done correctly, the use of food plots can be used very strategically on your property to facilitate harvest, whether uh, it's chasing a particular buck or whether it's harvesting does to keep the population density under control. To give you some idea, I mean, if you really want to look at the numbers here of, of what you can do with food plots and what you can do with, with management and forest management designed for wildlife habitat, look at this comparison here. These are, are very general numbers. There's always exceptions, but in the southeast anyways, if you're in a, an unmanaged forest, and let me, let me provide context. When I say unmanaged forest, I don't mean unmanaged from a forestry perspective. I mean unmanaged from a wildlife habitat perspective. So if your goal is wildlife habitat and it's not managed, probably only going to produce about 100 pounds of, of deer food per acre. And that's literally years of, of, of studies, different studies from around the southeast. Go to a forest that's not being managed for wildlife habitat. Pick out the plants, identify the plants that deer eat. And, and literally clip them and weigh them and see what that forest is producing. And so in that case, only about 100 pounds, sometimes less, sometimes a little more. However, when you start managing the forest for wildlife habitat, you, you can easily produce fivefold or tenfold the amount of, of deer food per acre. So literally, you can start approaching 1,000 pounds of deer food per acre which is fantastic, and you think about the context of most operations at that scale, is that you're doing these type of, of timber management or thinning operations over 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 or so acres. So a really big impact on deer diet quality. So that just kind of gives you a comparison of if you're in a typical situation, uh, the property isn't managed, you're, you're getting only about 100 pounds per acre, you can get 500 to 1,000 when you start managing the forest for wildlife habitat and then supplement that uh, with, with your food plots. And now you are creating a situation where you are truly improving diet quality and you can expect to see changes in the deer herd 
again, based on your objectives. It may be to raise the carrying capacity so that you have more deer. It may be from the perspective of, I want to increase deer quality, body size, antler size, etc. Those are generally the steps you'd have to take to see that type of return on your investment in the deer herd.